Yo, what's good? It's your boy. And I have been struggling on what kind of video to make right now. One of the like biggest questions is what is the best class to go on every race? And that's kind of my goal with the video today is I want to give y'all a class to go on every race in the game right now. That's obtainable and whatnot. Because that's the question I get asked the most in stream is like, hey, what should I go on an Issei? What should I go on my Stoltis? What should I go on a Vistan? What should I do on a Veneri? What should I do on a Domino's? It's a lot of questions. And that's the goal of this video here is to answer the questions to what class I should go to what race I have. So let's just get into it. We're going to start uh just from like the top down so starting with estella i'm gonna be real not really a good race personally if i had any money i would re-roll off it to get any of the other more common races but it does have some ups uh rage at 33 percent health or lower gaining 25 percent damage boost for the fight well below 40 percent hp received 50 percent more healing Damage bonus for Rage is increased. Increases enduring fighter and Rage thresholds at 40% and 50% respectively. Now, although not great, you could very easily make a decent Paladin on this race. Not my first choice for it though, but you could also just go a full strength build since you do start with two strength. Not completely awful. If this were my choice, my choice of build would probably be an all strength brawler. Moving on, we got Nisei. Now, Nisei is actually a very interesting race. It's got some goober base stats, but energy expert, 33% chance for double energy gain. Improved alchemy, 20% chance to double potion yield. And then this one is the most important passive it has. The element expertise, 15% bonus to magic and fire element damage. Now, for those of you that haven't heard it, you go monk which does fire damage on a nisei and you can do a flame drop that essentially does i don't even remember what it was it was like it can do like almost a thousand damage or something crazy like that on thorion with flame drop if you're a nisei monk uh the only other thing i'd really go with nisei is like maybe like an elementalist wouldn't be terrible i feel like if you went uh elementalist you could get like that blue blaze and then get high high damage or like maybe lightning crash not sure those are probably my two choices for nisei anything with fire damage basically is is pickable but i'm pretty sure the only two fire damages are monk and elementalist on to number three stultus this race for being a common race is actually really really cool so base stats nothing special right start with two strength speed lot three speed we get two actives vanishing drive and focus step uh both pretty good uh vanishing drive literally allows you to make it to like mount duel in a matter of seconds and not get an encounter but it's important to look at speed blitz adrenaline runner and speed means power these are your passives grant gain crit chance from invested speed points for those that don't know, this on a Lancer build is absolutely crazy. And like when I say crazy, I mean crazy. Runner, high, higher run speed, honestly not too important because that is probably going to be, I think, primarily for out of battles. Adrenaline, gain more encounter escape chance the lower your HP is. This is good for people that are like kind of new to the game, right? Allow you to escape battles in case you get kind of low because you don't have very much soul tree points. And then speed blitz increases dodge bar at the cost of block bar now this is actually really good because if you just go like 120 speed and then you you basically your dodge bar is like half of the entire thing like it's crazy it's crazy um obviously i do believe you can go blade dancer with this I don't remember if it scales off of speed or not, but the biggest and best choice for this is actually going to be Lancer. 
Lancer is crazy on a Staltus. Staltus Lancer speed build has so much damage capability. It is crazy. You can do a crap ton of damage. Speed strength scaling. You can stun things. Pretty much everything here does damage based off of your speed stat. And it's kind of nuts, man. It's really nuts. I've seen videos of speed lancers made, made on a stool test do crazy damage. But enough of that. We are getting into the semi-rare-ish races of Vastayan. This is going to basically fall into one of two builds. I wouldn't make it on any... Uh, other build than these two uh number one is gonna be dark wraith dark wraith super strong you get two summons um you did uh the stain did get nerfed a lot the spirit awakening did and spirit awakening used to be really good now it's just kind of like it's a move but you're probably never gonna use it but you actually can make a really crazy uh, build with Monk. You could go Luck or I think just full all Luck or like full Arcane, I think it is. But yeah, I, th I think Luck Dark Wraith is the best for sure, for sure. But yeah, Vestayan is really good for this. And then the other thing you can go on a Vestayan is a Necromancer. Necromancer is pretty strong with Vestayan because it's just, it's just, Necromancer with Vestain is just stronger Necromancer basically because you have the skeleton and the other thing the uh, Gale The wind spirit you also have a resin stuff. So you're really useful when it comes to battles But that's really all I got to say for Vestain next up is Veneri Veneri is a 7% but it's not all that good to be honest like a Lot of people probably think it's gonna be crazy it's low-key just average if I had to be honest it does have a couple good things like burst trap place trap in front of you that explodes when hit with a physical attack damage of the trap scales with speed and luck so full luck venary you trap you put down a burst trap and then you hit that surprise package on the boss and then you're gonna be doing crazy damage don't get me wrong you also have well scramble which is kind of just eh. it's all right if you have a crap ton of money you can make yourself really, really strong, but I wouldn't necessarily like rely on this. You also have lucky proc, increased enchant, increased enchant proc chance. That's actually kind of crazy. Wealth addict gains a damage buff depending on how much money the player has. Also pretty good. And potion quaver, uh, plus one to low tier potion use um eh. like overall it's just good for a luck build nothing else if that makes any sense it's all right it's all right that's kind of all you can say about it it's good you know make that luck build but that's about all you're going to be using venary for otherwise if you have a venaria you're probably going to use it to uh sacrifice it for a slime race let's be real or like a uh, amorous but before we go to the next one obviously i gotta tell you all the classes rogue luck assassin luck those are pretty much the only classes you ever want to go on a venary that's all i really gotta say for venary though loki next up draugr draugr is a really really sick race really awesome you get illusion cage which is actually a crazy ability you set a trap that triggers whenever the cage was targeted by an enemy which will afterwards stun the enemy for two turns two turns of stun you could like do so much with two turns you could get max energy you could do two buff ups to like triple your damage i mean truthfully there is so much you can do with a losing cage and obviously that's not the peak of the race if that was all the race had it wouldn't be that good but you also have blood shards open a blood portal which sends out five blood shards with base damage 2.5 and dual skills arcane strength each hit slightly heals you now, if you go full strength, the B0 Vampiring and Reaper Enchant and pop, you're, you're healing like five damage or six damage or seven for and, and for a move. That's crazy because you can pop a heal pot and then do this or like do any or like do like one of your self hit moves on Impaler and then use Blood Shards to heal. And you pretty much just heal it back, bro. 
You also have some pretty crazy passives. Onslaught. Killing an enemy grants a speed and luck bonus for the rest of the fight. Luck Leech. Landing a crit will now grant a small life steal. Which is just W. And then Enhanced Bloodlust, which is like your endgame passive, just increases the crit life steal. Which is just crazy. Not to mention, the race is drippy. It has little wings on the back, which you can't see in the image. But like, you also have like this crackled face with these cool eyes. Overall, really, really solid race. I would go Impaler on this personally. Um, I don't know another, I mean, any class that does a lot of like critting. So like Impaler, Berserker, um, stuff with multi hits primarily. Those are the, pro honestly, probably like a luck build on Rogue or something would be crazy. Or Assassin, Assassin, Rogue, Luck, Draugr. I don't know haven't seen it been done but i feel like it'd be kind of crazy especially with the crit healing all right next up corvolus three percent rarity super rare race overall it's it's all right um not amazing but it's all right uh your base stats are basically just arcane this build you're mainly only gonna go mage on you get cast amplify amplifies the target's damage of fire dark holy magic nature and poison affinities by 30 percent Reduce energy cost of attacks with four or less energy by one. Arcane ritual on initial cast boosts all allies outgoing and incoming healing per turn. 40% chance to boost fire, dark, holy, magic, and nature affinities damage by plus 40%. This race is so, so, so strong on like a hexer or a necromancer or even an elementalist. But honestly, that's all I'd really go on this race. I wouldn't choose anything else other than mages which is kind of sad because when a race is like a trip one trick pony like that where you're only going to go one class on it ever loki kind of lame but it is really good so so don't get the wrong idea super super strong even though it is kind of eh, when it comes to like diversification with builds you also have holy affinity where your holy powers buff magic affinity where your magic powers buff as well as energy affinity which is double energy chance and fast learner learn classes three levels earlier than normal kind of kind of nice man for for people that are like new to the game and stuff getting one of these allow you to get your class three levels early which can make progression a lot easier and safer but that's really all i got for corvolus now we got dominoes one of my personal favorite races in the game i have so many dominoes it's like an unhealthy addiction but Dominos actually got buffed in the most recent update. Uh, its base stats are mainly catered toward being a paladin or a saint. But in my personal opinion, I think it's capable of being on any build. You have Restructure as an active, which is just a turn-based healing. And a Mulligan Realm, which allows you to place a like rotating, roaring realm of pure draconic energy. Granting you and your allies increased regen and mulligan buff which basically makes to where if you get dealt a deadly hit you might not die which is pretty useful especially for people fighting bosses that they've never fought or for people that are still new to the game and don't have max soul tree and stuff like that you also have the passives draconic aura heal two percent of your max HP at the start of your turn if you are 25 percent hp or under that is just a pretty decent heal buff on top of the already healing per turn you get with soul tree dragon blood has four lives instead of three on legendary mode gains extra energy chance instead and that's what makes this build capable for almost anything um obviously for this your main classes are going to be um saint or maybe necro if you want to if you want to reach a little bit but i personally made my rogue luck build on a Dominoes, since rogue luck builds usually don't have a ton of health, they have like 90. So being able to heal myself and make it to where if I get dealt a deadly hit, I can survive is kind of nice. I also have an impaler, um, Dominoes, because you know, you do damage to yourself, but then you can heal yourself with restructure. I don't know, it just seemed like a good combo. It's alright, Drauga Impaler is better, but Dominoes Impaler is cool and works. Now let's get on to our last rollable race, Dulahan. Now Dulahan is amazing. It's drippy. It has two extremely strong actives. Has the extra life passive, 
which gives energy chance on legendary you gain four stat points instead of three every five levels which just gives a free eight stat points which is just crazy because it is the only class to give an extra three stat points without any kind of you know random buff or anything you also have flame monster 20 percent and eight fire resist once again kind of crazy 10 percent and eight hex resist also crazy for thorion and envy the two best bosses to farm you also have 30 percent more essence game which makes leveling just 10 x 10 x easier bro 10 times easier man for Dulahan, pretty much everything works this entire super class list monk brawler dark wraith paladin blade dancer berserker saint lancer impaler rogue assassin elementalist hexer necro i mean seriously Dulahan on anything is just so strong but if i had to give my personal like top three suggestions number one would be elementalist number two would be assassin strength build and my number three would probably be something like brawler or monk since you get more fire damage and ghost flame when you're on monk with Dulahan. but enough uh you know meat riding Dulahan. let's hop on to the unlockable obtainable races first up lentum s tier race it, it, it's an s tier race it is so good amazing race you have bane which is a phenomenal active i mean this does so much damage like, like seriously i don't think you understand bane is so strong and then you also have mucilage which just makes you take like no damage from like a certain type of thing from a certain uh type you also get passive regen to hp every turn skills with income healing you can talk to the slime statues slash king slime without a July ring which let's be real that that don't matter it's just funny 20 to 45 percent poison attack resist not damage over time but it does need more testing so it's not 100 percent figured out but you also get slimy shield which is a crazy passive anytime you block an attack it applies blind and weakened to the attacker which if you don't know pairs well with a certain build I, I have a whole video dedicated to it i even sold yarthal with it it's pretty much like it, it's my holy grail when it comes to builds it's the best build i've ever made i've ever had anyways but yeah lentum is crazy two builds that you want to go on lentum primarily uh number one brawler brawler lentum chef's kiss man truly an amazing build phenomenal and then you could also go paladin slime because paladin slime is really really good but i've also seen people running blade dancer i suggest paladin or brawler i cannot speak good or bad about blade dancer but blade dancer slime is a very 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 strong choice from what i've seen i see a lot of people run blade dancer slime but if you want it directly from me i would say either paladin or brawler moving on to the last race uh amorous I'm gonna be honest, bro. Don't have an Amorous, so I can't talk too much about Amorous. But I'll give my uh, opinion on it. Way too hard to get. It is. It would have to give an absurd amount of stuff to uh, make this worth it, especially because it costs literally everything. Your base stats are actually pretty strong with three arcane, three strength. You can go either strength or arcane builds. Uh, luck and speed is a little disappointing. Wouldn't go a luck or speed build on this. But you get Sinister Gaze, stare your enemy with a cursed eye to deal damage and copy their buffs while sharing your debuffs. Which can be good in a lot of situations, especially with bosses and crap like that. You also get Undulating Hex. Uh, unleash a large burst of Hex from your cursed side that forms into a large blade of Hex that drops onto a foe. Really cool move, but it's not really like, oh my god, it's the best move in the game. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's pretty good. Here's the issue, innate weakness to holy and nature damage. Like bruh, you make them give everything in the game. Give them a couple cool things and then make them innate weak to holy and nature. I don't know. I have a little issue with it. I'm sure some people were like, well, they have to balance it out. And maybe they do, I don't know. You also get immunity to stun and hex status effects, which pretty good because hex does make you take double damage which can be really scary especially with mv and dorian so i can't lie that is nice 
I wish they kept cursed because cursed is really really annoying that's all I gotta say when it comes to this build um I've been seeing primarily two things I've been seeing a lot a lot a lot of people run assassin with this build and I've been seeing a lot of people run hexer with amorous so I would say assassin or hexer for amorous if there's a better build race combo with amorous please tell me in the comments i'll make sure to pin it if you guys agree with me make sure to say positive stuff in the comments as well if you guys disagree give me what your your disagreement is what you think is better and some actual reasonings to why it's better but uh that's pretty much all i gotta say make sure to check out my other content like this video and uh lentum plus brawler best combo ever on top i'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.